Alright, this ain't dumbass of the week style video anyway. <laughs> yes, I'm not very organized. So you get what you get. Um, so David D. Hilster. Um, so his new tactic, and he always has tactics, uh, is going with these scripted videos, um, you know, trying to make this look like a production. Fine, whatever. Um, he's still fake thumbing up his videos, you know, by 20, 25 extra views from a bunch of obviously sock accounts you must have, which is kind of just bullshit. I, I mean, it's just dishonest. <laughs> it's so that's all it is. Oh, because other people cheat, I'll cheat, you know. It's, it's just, you know, it's, it's just it's like just writing failure on the cover of your book you know it doesn't matter what kind of book it is it's, you know you put failure right on the cover anyway been ha sort of having things like that in my in my you know currently in my struggle to find contentment in this new world I have to live in um because you know people do that you know it's like you, you make something nice and then they do something stupid to it like you know it's like the signature sometimes on paintings, you know, artists that just annoy the fuck out of me. Because their signature is almost as big as the painting, or it's, you know, in the wrong color, and it just sticks out, and you're just like, what the fuck? <laughs> so anyway, it's just, it's just kind of a what the fuck kind of thing to do, it's just to start off by cheating. Anyway, um, so... Uh, I guess that's enough of a context. I mean, David is, um, you know, um, he's not, you know, in a lot of ways, he's not playing the scheme fair. He's pretending he's an advocate for any kind of theory, and yet he has his own theory. It, it doesn't make any sense. So, in some ways, he's saying, oh, there can be multiple versions of the truth. But he seems to think that, no, I don't think his father believes that. You know, that the truth is the truth. There's one right answer. Not a bunch of right answers. I mean, it's just, you know, it's just more bullshit. Light may just be the most important phenomenon in the universe. Uh, it's just a silly thing to say, right? Uh, if, if you're saying visible light, uh, obviously, you know, it's kind of retarded just because they're all important. <laughs> you know, all of it. We can't survive without it. Um... You know, we could certainly hear without our eyesight, so we can still do language and all that kind of stuff. Um, not necessarily the most important thing in the universe. I'm just saying, it's just a stupid thing to start off with, I think. It transmits information about the physical world around us and has fascinated we humans for thousands of years. But the big... Um, again, no, it's fascinated us in the sense that we are mystified. So that's it's mystified us is how I would rewrite that sentence. It's mystified humans for thousands of years. They can't understand how this thing goes from there to here. <laughs> yeah, they think it's complicated when now it's really simple. This question about light still remains. What is it really? Mainstream science tells us that it is a photon, yet if you look at... So they're using a word to describe an aspect of the transfer of energy. And it's kind of tied to the quantum nature, the idea that it's, a, it's in packets, clumps. There's a clump of photon. Now, conventional physics isn't very um, specific about how that clump is formed, how necessarily that clump travels. So I'll agree, conventional physics is, has no clue. They still remain mystified. Look at the conventional descriptions. One quickly learns that the definition seems very unclear. The current definition of photon in Wikipedia demonstrates the schizophrenic nature of the photon. Wikipedia defines the photon as a type of elementary particle Right. So when they say elementary particle, they don't mean a particle. So that's part of the thing that's kind of funny. Um, but clearly they're clinging to that um, description because they think it's one of the elementary elements. Okay. So they're calling it a particle because it's an elementary element. That is, it's a function that is can't be broken down. That it's whatever it is doesn't have a smaller mechanism making it 
when clearly they'll they are duplicitous because they're claiming two different fields are somehow manifesting the photon, uh, allowing it to manifest. The quantum of the electromagnetic field, including electromagnetic radiation such as light, and the force carrier for the electromagnetic force. Now, <laughs> obviously that's kind of a joke, just because clearly it's not a photon they think is the force carrier, they call it a virtual photon because they have no explanation for where the energy comes from. The quanta of energy is has no source. So they have to call it a virtual photon because they know there's nothing inside the magnet that's making photons. It's burning any kind of energy to create photons. It's not losing any mass to create the photons. So they know it can't be a real photon. The first thing to note is the term elementary particle. Wikipedia gives us the following definition. In particle physics, an elementary particle or fundamental particle is a subatomic particle with no substructure, thus not composed of other particles. Right, so the idea would be in the wave context or in the perturbation idea would be that it's a perturbation in an elementary part of the field. So whatever this magnetic field is in the electric field, that's elementary. And this perturbation is just made out of that elementary substance moving. The dominoes. There's nothing inside the dominoes. This means that the photon is not comprised of any parts. For many of the science woke, this is not possible. I don't know. <coughs> um, science woke, I guess, is a club name for, in my opinion, simpletons, uh, dupes, uh, people who think, believe in angels, believe God, the creationist, creation scientist, loop-de-doo, nutters, um, most of which are on missions for, um, again, to rationalize an irrational belief in a God, for example. There are no such thing as elementary particles. One of the reasons for this is... Again, it's a description of something that there's no physical mechanism we can see to break them into anything and to break their quanta nature. So therefore, um, they're elementary in the sense that there's no accounting for any particle or part or mechanism they could be made of that is more, that is smaller. Um, that, you know, there's no ingredient list the necessity of elementary particles to be assigned magical properties in order to orbit. Again, they're, they're not magical properties, they're very specific properties, so that's kind of silly. Um, and obviously things would have properties if they're things. If something exists that has the property of being a something, not a nothing, uh, and it can have features, you know, I would argue that photons are very simple. They just move from point A to point B at the speed of light and do nothing more. And that they carry a quanta of energy. And they have a ray length. So that's the part that gets kind of confusing about well, what part is the photon? Is the photon the head or the tail? You know, uh, and that's where conventional physics fails because they pretend <coughs> like our eye can only see what they say, we need a, a minimum of six photons, or five photons, let's say, to be able to, for our brain to register the photon as a thing that existed and happened. Now, you know, there's more than one way to interpret that. Six different rays of light are now one ray of light that has six quanta components to it. So we need six quanta of photonic radiation to say for our for our brain to register the photon, um, we need that much energy in quanta terms, not in actual photon terms. Recognize them. I will come to this later. Safe to say that if you spend time to read Dr. Glenn Borkert's works on infinity, so this is the again he's huxting these other kooks, in my opinion. Um, and again, he can't explain any of this, uh, you know, paraphrase it and explain why this is a compelling theory. Uh, 
and it's in my opinion it's just another god of the gaps thing bullshit I'm just going to pretend the complexity goes all the way down instead of explaining how it evolves and I would argue that clearly the fact that the uh, the the, um, the stuff in the universe could evolve into its form I think is obvious uh, the complexity is an emergent property it's not made that way you will most likely come to the conclusion that particles are always made up of parts, or as Borkert says, there are no partless parts. The second part of the... So it's just El Horton, here's a who theory then, because the complexity has to be just as complex. You know, if you're going to if you're gonna make the, the elementary particle made out of a complex universe, for example, I mean, it's that kind of silly. I have absolutely no evidence uh, to prove one way or the other, but I would just argue that there's nothing indicating that in the evidence. The evidence doesn't fit that the small universe is just like the big universe. It's not just like it. It is, and everything is much more definable and discrete in the small universe mainstream definition of the photon is the quantum of the electromagnetic field. This second part directly and logically clashes with the first definition of an elementary particle. A quantum means a discrete quantity. This right. requires... Um, and, and so again, this is just playing with words. It gets into some semantics, but the, I, I would agree with him that conventional physics has been a coward and isn't willing to just man up and say we're etherists because that's what they really are their electric and magnetic fields are ether fields they're not fields of energy produced by something so when I say a force field for example or we see on Star Trek force field we see energy creating it we don't see some field being activated we see energy produced and that's the kind of the difference so they're saying that there's some field that gets tingled, you know, <laughs> and activates something like that. More than one thing. So we have in the very first sentence of the definition of a photon saying it is indivisible, but it is made up of a discrete quantity of something. It cannot be both. Uh, great. It can't be a wave and a particle. These are all just stupid things that conventional physics has said. So, in that sense, they're wrong, um, but they are right in this climate sense. It's a clump, um, and all you need is a model of how the clump moves through space, the quanta. And I would argue that clearly a single photon doesn't have a frequency, a single quanta. That you have to have more than one quanta to have a frequency, obviously. More than one bullet has to come out of the gun for you to know how often the bullets are arriving. This definition is impossible without any solutions suggested by big science. We have been faced with... Yeah, well, they don't worry about it because all they care about is that they have the energy um, accounted for in terms of the photons' energy in terms of quanta, and they have some understanding of the relationship between time and how many little quanta are going to be in the photon, so to speak, the ray of energy. So again, it just has to do with the fact that um, this was put together piecemeal over hundreds of years, and the language is shit. They did it really badly. The infamous wave-particle duality presented by mainstream science for almost 100 years, yet there are solutions, and they lie outside of big physics and cosmology. Uh, I agree, uh, but I don't agree that your solutions have anything to do with being the right answer. <laughs> They're wrong answers. Uh, some of them overtly more wrong than the current nonsense. They are found in the science woke, who are proposing real physical models that try to solve the problem. Yes, completely conflicting models that can't possibly all be right. Um, they're just adding noise. So they're not really decisively answering the question. They're just suggesting more UFO theories, more fairy tales, 
So instead of gremlins, the hoobies did it. Instead of the hoobies, um, whatever, um, whatever the other little things, little gremlins did it. They're just, you're, you're just all hopelessly making crap up that it doesn't answer the question. Problem of not the photon, but of light. Ether and lattice models give light a physical model. And I guess I could speed this up really a little bit. <sighs> so, um, so he doesn't believe ether is right, and yet he keeps selling it. He doesn't think it's the right answer, yet he keeps talking about it as if it, hey, this is a valid, useful thing to bring up. No, it's exactly what conventional physics believes, except they won't say the word ether. I mean, bent space is ether, obviously. Virtual photon is ether, obviously. Both do so without the need of a photon. Ether models avoids the problem of the existence of a photon by creating a model that describes light as waves through a medium called ether. The ether particle is not a photon. It is a particle that is similar to the photon in that it is firstly postulated. Right, so in a sense, it's so stupidly redundant. It's like, okay, I can, I can have a domino over here and a, do and a place for the domino to sit over here. And I could just throw the domino and let him land there. Or I can have the domino hit a bunch of superfluous, useless other dominoes to get over here. <laughs> yeah, it sounds pretty stupid. If your ether is particles, surrounded by empty space, then why bother? Because all you're talking about is movement. So why not just have the particle move all the way? And get rid of the wasted, uh, inefficient nonsense, the drag of the ether. To explain light. But no etherist ever calls their ether particles photons, because they know that the photon, as described by mainstream science, is not an ether particle. Well, they know the photon is more than one ton. So, and people just make fun of that. Um, that, you know, we have this wrong description. Electron is an electron. There's one of them. They're, they're, they're hunks. And their function can be one electron can make something happen. Photon requires them to be in a row, the bullets. More than one. It's just one bullet. We don't have any device that could detect it, except maybe this one. So short rays of energy do this, and we can't detect them in any way, because without their frequency, we can't get electrons to react uh, in a way that we can understand. And that's just a simple truth. So the energy of gravity and magnetism is likely the energy that doesn't have a frequency uh, that we can uh, we're not getting enough information to receive frequency this is because mainstream science abandoned ether during Einstein's reign of non-physical tear upon big science so again there's no abandonment in the fundamental theory bent space is saying space is something not nothing clearly you can't bend nothing so I don't know how Einstein undid ether he just renamed it Big science abandoned the concept of ether and moved headlong into the world of light as a photon and a wave. So again, as a photon, you mean particle and a wave. And yes, that's the duality is retarded. So if you had two different people in your group and one of them believed in particles and one of them believed in waves, why wouldn't you just admit, well, that's not going to work. They both can't be right. One of them has to be an idiot. Somehow, at the same Or both of them have to be idiots same time. Lattice models are slightly different from ether models, and whereas ether is like a gas, a lattice model is more like a solid. Ether transmits light like sound traveling through the air. Lattice structures, on the other hand, transmit light... So, making a comparison between lattice structures and... So, that's basically rope theories. Okay, <laughs> lattices are ropes. Um, yeah. Much like the sound that travels through a vibrating string between cans. In both these models, light consists of waves in a medium, and the medium cannot be a single particle. Thus, the phenomenon of light cannot be a single... Well, again, but it depends on what you consider the um, wave of magnitude being a single thing. So, 
how it waves. So theoretically, it could actually be a single bit of the ether that moves at a time. Like a water wave is made out of a whole bunch of atoms that are creating a wave. But theoretically, each single little atom could just be doing this, you know. One atom does it, the next one does it, the next one does it, the next one does it. So in a sense, it could be a quanta in an ether. Single particle like a photon. But what really brought me to the subject of the impossibility of a photon was my father's solution for creating light waves using multiple particles. He told me... Uh, the solution is preposterous and um, it makes more problems than it solves. His solution is, is to make a single photon millions of some other shit, some whatever, gravitons, blah, whatever, elementary bits, but tons of them, like millions of them, in, in, you know, in change of density, lots of them little, lots, little, lots, little, creating a wave completely superfluous it's un completely unnecessary they're just bullets at a distance done how he came to that conclusion and through that journey we can see why he rejected the idea of a photon light has a wavelength and frequency frequency is what we see as color frequency by definition is the rate at which things plural pass through or by a point in space uh, right or by the, how fast they spin, so that's a, you know it gets a little tricky. Lots of things can have a frequency that doesn't require them to be more than one thing. Um, no, spinning. Well, you can't really spin. Uh, you have to spin geometry. You could argue that the, a sphere has a continuous surface, but I change into a square. Well, then you could say each surface is a new thing. <laughs> you know. Not really, but you could say Frequency, that. by definition, is more than one particle. No one particle can transmit frequency. This so, again, it just doesn't make much sense because a pendulum is one thing. It's at a frequency. It's movement. Uh, I don't know. I think there's ways of um, recognizing that that's just overstatement. It's unnecessary to argue that point. This is why science calls light and other electromagnetic phenomena waves. No, they call it waves because they're fooled by the simplest pattern in the universe and think every time that pattern shows up, it has to be only one thing that caused it. And that's what's fooled them. But otherwise, there's nothing wavy about something traveling billions of light years through space and being in exact positions. <laughs> it's just, that doesn't seem like waves at all. Waves aren't like that. To say that light is a photon and that it must carry the information of frequency as a single particle simply seems... Yes, it is stupid in my opinion to even imply that would be possible. <clears throat> that, the, that the frequency information is in the quanta itself when it's clearly not. Um, it's just the rate at which the packets of energy, the clumps, arrive. It's like a bad way to make a physical model for light. If there was such a thing as a photon, one photon would have to carry wavelength and frequency. My father's... Wavelength and frequency are really the same thing, and, you know, and mechanically you can't really avoid it, so you might as well just use one word or the other. Logic, when arriving at this solution for the wave-particle duality, reason that a single particle can have spin and velocity. But given the fact that light... Um, I would argue that none of these elementary particles have any of this spin nonsense, <laughs> so it's a useless term. They're simple objects, they're not complex objects, and um, spin is just bullshit. Travels at the same velocity of C. Spin simply couldn't transmit the needed information for a particle we call the photon. At the well, it clearly could. If the thing was spinning and it had any change in its surface, uh, clearly the spin could be detected as a frequency because you could just detect where, whether it was... Um, you know, white face, black face, uh, whether it was that point was facing you or away from you. Um, so, yes, it could carry frequency information. At this point, the photon would have to start to resemble the particles in the particle zoo of the standard model. And as Alexander... Well, it is part of the particle zoo, so I don't know why it would resemble them when it's... Of course it resembles them, it's in there. 
Alexander Unziker appropriately points out, particles in mainstream physics are arbitrary attributes assigned to... Clearly not an arbitra arbitrary. So again, this idea that somehow there isn't some reason for specific um, uh, definitions. Of course they have reasons for those and experiments to defend them. It's not arbitrary. The properties are assigned based on the results of experiments. Now, I would argue that in many cases they're misidentifying what the cause is in the experiment, so therefore they have the properties wrong. The photon doesn't have any properties of a wave. The stuff it's interacting with, that's the stuff that is causing um, <clears throat> variation in the photons travel. Arbitrary packages of quanta. Our photon could simply carry the attribute frequency without regard to any satisfactory physical manifestation of frequency. This is magic, not physicality. So again, I don't think they're arguing for anything magic in the sense they just haven't said it very clearly. Um, but the attribute is clearly associated with the quanta of energy. The fact that the quanta of energy does have to come in packets that are at least two quantas worth, yeah, it's a fact. And it's not a fact I don't think they would deny. They would they would state that yes, our photo our best photo detector can't detect photons, okay, of a short enough ray length, you could argue. That a certain number have to hit for them to register the existence of the quanta of energy. A certain amount has to hit. My father was eventually led to a particle model, but unlike ether and lattice theories, light would be made up of moving particles, all at the same speed, traveling in waves. This model, like the other two models, required light to be waves of a plurality of particles, not one. And how would they get organized? I mean, it's the simplest thing in the universe. I'm just saying, how do you organize millions of little clumps into a clump, and, you know, into a bigger clump? What would organize the photons? And then you get into the real flaws of his theory, which is he invents a second force that travels uh, the speed of light squared. Uh, just ludicrous crap. Completely just made up crap. No evidence demonstrating any such force exists. Particle. In all three models, the particles are not photons, or particles that are exclusively dedicated to light. Ether and lattice models try to describe gravity using the same so the point is, is they don't describe it any better than conventional physics. Huge gaps, they don't cover the evidence. So if you present all the evidence that you have to deal with, all the phenomena that we know of, their theory doesn't cover it all. So what good is it? It's just as weak as theirs. Particles, making them more general particles than the exclusive photon. In the de Hilster particle model, the same particle that is responsible for light is also responsible for gravity, electrons, electricity. So that's the stupid part, right? I mean, clear distinction between electrons and photons. Electrons don't move the speed of light. Um, electrons don't do a ton of these things. So it's just there's no way you can say it's the same particle. No, it can't be the same particle. It's stupid to say it's the same particle. No evidence that whatever f photons are, or electromagnetic radiation, whatever the fuck it is, Absolutely no evidence it travels um, uh, see this is the trick at variable speeds. That is no evidence that it can go faster than the speed of light and no real evidence that it actually travels through a medium slower. It's just that mediums are harder to get through in the sense they have to travel more distance going through a complex arrangement of atoms. Their path is not straight going through matter. And magnetism, to name of it. Uh, in fact, the photon that goes in isn't even the photon that goes out, in the sense that the packet of energy probably isn't the same packet when going through a medium. The idea of a single purpose particle for light, called the photon, is not only paradoxical in its current depth. So he sort of just said, we've used this particle, this quanta of energy, to describe gravity, electrons, and electricity. Um, they haven't done magnetism very well. Uh, and so he's just, just now just using it, this, this single particle, and then he says, the idea is ludicrous that there's this elementary particle. I mean... Definition in mainstream science. 
It has been wholly abandoned by the critical thinkers who are our science woke. So he clearly isn't abandoning quanta, and he's not abandoning the idea. Um, well, he is abandoning the idea of the consistency of photons. <laughs> that they're all the same. Outside the mainstream, where new models are more efficient, describe inexplicable phenomena, and provide... So he, he just says so. They're more efficient. I don't see any of that. Hope for creating new technologies. Something. I don't think this new technology hope is any realistic meaning either. It's just kind of silly. Um, there might be some chance getting to fusion or some other kind of bullshit with better fundamental models might give you some way to exploit, but we kind of already know this whole thermal equilibrium problem. We know the thermodynamics really don't allow any miracles. Big physics has been failing at for over 100 years. And before you go and say that big physics has given us countless technologies like the computer and the internet, let's be honest and realize that these technologies are the results of modern engineering. They yeah, well, they're the result of uh, learned experience. And much of physics is a documentation of that learned experience. And much of it is correct. So, in that sense, there's nothing wrong with a lot of the math. The formulas are, generally speaking, correct. So, again, it's just kind of bullshit um, not to separate the two things. So, yes, what we've... The theoretical why cause information isn't nearly as important to actually building something as the what does it do information. So if you know the what it does information, you can build something. Understanding cause isn't necessary to that. So if you know the effects, you can do stuff. Um, so that there's really two parts to physics. The part that's trying to explain how it works, and the part that tells you what it does, sort of. It's in the real physical world. And it is the engineering spirit that drives science forward, not the theoretical musings of imaginations that come up with paradoxical impossibilities like the photon. So again, the photons aren't, obviously they exist. We have this word for the idea of the concept, and all we have to do is clarify that when you say photon, you have to understand that's like saying bullet. And when we're saying bullet, we're saying, look, well, you know, could be a, more than one bullet. A stream of bullets. This video and companion article can be found on the website sciencewoke.org where you can read about critical thinkers from around the world who are pushing science forward. All right. Uh, look, I've listened to a lot of this stuff. Um, sorry. Crap. <laughs> yeah. Generally speaking. Uh, so, whatever. Um, clearly, conventional physics is full of shit. They don't even do a great job, in my opinion, of even pointing out all that's wrong with conventional physics. They attempt to, you know, and then they end up falling for stuff like light bending by gravity. They fall for that like it's true, even though the evidence for it is shitty. So, and then they come up with their own silly theories to account for light being bent when, well, um, you haven't demonstrated that it actually happens. So, lots of flaws. So anyway, sorry, I'm a bit, uh, yeah, I guess I'm, I'm just uh, having a down period, a bit depressed, and, um, <laughs> yeah, I'm just not, uh, I'm having to force the issue. I just broke this thing again. I guess I have to buy a new one that actually fits properly on the battery. It's just it. It's the wrong size threads, I guess. Some sort of bullshit like that. Just annoying little shit. I mean, I have another one, but it doesn't. This one's copper. And it makes so much better electrical contact. So, you know, you get more, you know, bang out of the battery. But, uh, whatever. Where's my other one? I'm find it. I'll try it in desperation to see if I can get it work better. Anyway, so till the next time and such.
I have to reach over things to get to the keyboard. I mean, things just aren't where they need to be at the moment. <laughs> 